Right. We all know the school system's broke. If you look at any of the statistics uh, since it was being tracked, guess what? It's only declined. And I'm talking about you have 30 years of data looking at how our school system has continually declined to where right now I would think the average person would think that it's completely failed us. Yeah. Yeah. Nine out of 10 people don't believe in the school system. And rightfully, I hate it. I think it's a joke. I think since COVID, I think a lot of people got to to experience just how much of a joke school is, right? Yes. In comparison to when their kids were stuck at home, they were done with school in two hours. Yeah. We got to send them to this institutional building for six, seven hours a day to get two hours of education and four Mm -hmm. to five hours of fucking off. Yep. And whatever bullshit comes with it. Yeah, and, like trying to figure out if you got a, a penis or a vagina. Yeah. And so, guys, first off, I just want to I want to preface this by saying that if you're a school teacher and you're offended by this, cool. All right. Uh, I get it. You're going to be upset. You're going to defend what you're trying to do. We're not attacking teachers here. We appreciate teachers. And honestly, most of the teachers that I have spoken with would agree that you guys are handcuffed. So... Even the good teachers that really want to make a difference struggle because of the limitations that are put on them by their uh, superiors, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that this is something that needs to get called out more. And where I'm coming from is they should never be talking about um, sexuality in school, okay? I, I don't think that should be a thing. I think they should learn math. They should learn all of the core subjects. They should learn how to be a good person and a citizen. We don't talk about that, guys. We don't talk about voting and how to be a good American, all right? We just send them to an institution where they become good little worker bees, and that's all that they learn is how to do the thing and work as a worker. Hey, don't discredit learning how Abraham Lincoln died, bro. That shit serves a massive purpose. Yeah, I, I bet. Yeah, I do. I piss people off all the time when I'm like, we get into these conversations and people are like, school system, history of the United States of America, so important. Yeah. Wrong. So so the first thing I want to challenge you guys to do, okay, and as entrepreneurs, I bet most of us are guilty of of this. And if you're not an entrepreneur, you're an intrapreneur and you listen, this is important for you to check. How active are you involved in your son's school or your daughter's school? Do you know what they're teaching them? Do you know the homework? I think the first step is to actually get involved. And one of the things that we did at the time when we wanted to get involved, because we wanted to check everything out when we moved here, is my wife applied and was on the school board for a year. She saw everything was cool. They weren't teaching them anything that they shouldn't be. And so we knew that from high up, okay? There are ways to get involved. And actually, it's really not that hard. You'd be, you'd be surprised how easy it is to get on a board, okay? So you can get involved, you can be involved. But now that that's where we're starting this, right? Get involved and know what's going on. What else can you do to outparent the schooling system, right? I'm gonna give you a specific example I did with my son. And I can tell you, it really lit that entrepreneurial flame in him, okay? He was interested in starting a business, a lemonade stand, we did that. He had some success and he loved it. And then he wanted to do it every weekend. And then I showed him, hey, now that you have this done, what's a business that you can continuously do besides a lemonade stand, but every kid does that. And so we landed on making toys with a 3D printer. And so he started to do that. And we were able to, I was able to show him how to track inventory, how to track his costs, how to actually build it with the 3D printer and how to sell it. And so now he has a little business where he makes all these toys and he sells them to people at school or after school. And he's learning all the ins and outs of being an entrepreneur. Not only is he learning, he's loving doing it. Okay. It's exciting for him. It's fun for him. All right. So that increases how quickly he wants to learn about it. And he's learning real skills that's transferable in the real world. Okay. So that to me is a big win and you don't have to do it with a 3d printer. You don't have to invest that much. What you have to do is find something in your, your child's interested in, take an interest in it and help him through it. 
And whatever that business decides to be, have him stick with it and learn all the ins and outs so he can actually understand the journey of entrepreneurship at an early age. I think that's very important. So don't get caught that. hustling at school because then you get a referral and suspend it like I did for selling candy. Um, I'm shocked that hasn't happened yet, but it hasn't happened. <laughs> yeah. I'm they ready. Find a way to shut it down, bro. They'll find a way. <laughs> yeah. I hope they, they better not call me or my wife because we'll both have the same answer. Yeah. All right. Yeah, uh, what not, are some... I'm not impressed, man. I, it is what it is. But I think yeah. most people just do just send their kids there because they're most households, obviously two working spouses, they don't have the flexibility to so get it, right? Now, it's also the other side. I'm, I'm more on the Grant Cardone side of my belief system in school, which is if I was on a private jet like he was all the time, my, my kids and family would just be with me. That would be their school. Yeah. And we actually uh, homeschooled last year to try it. And if it wasn't from sheer boredom, my daughter loved it. Right. She just missed the friends aspect of it. Right. Which is yeah. this year is her first year in high school. So she's not there to learn. She's smart. She's going to do her thing and get A's. It's not hard to do in these times. Right. Just mm -hmm. told. Uh, she's there for the fucking fun. Yeah. And I, I have her there for the fun because I'm like you, like uh, we're instilling uh, life lessons. Yep. I'm more concerned with her figuring out how to make money than I am if she can recite fucking every state alphabetically you yeah. know what i'm saying like that shit's not going to pay the bills so <clears throat> i agree to a certain extent like i think the old school no no pun intended but the old school schooling method is too outdated yeah but there are periods of time that are important i think depending on who you argue this point to deanna my wife is she loves history so to her it's absolute necessity because she a lot of logic is based on history for her Mm -hmm. I am could care less how it happened yesterday. I want to try to find a new way to make it better and easier to do today. Yep. So my logic on history is that shit happened a long time ago. It's not relevant to me. Yep. Too many things have changed. So we lead with that. Obviously we want to instill for school for our kids. It's more of learning how to understand where you're at in your hierarchy of adult child, right? Mm -hmm. All these peers are supposed to do what they're told unless it's a dangerous thing or not safe. Outside of that, they're not getting a lot. They get a lot of fluff time and fucking off. They end up getting more in trouble than they do any damn thing. Yep. So that's the other component to this is that you've got high schools have basically become places of fraternity, sorority, hangout. Yeah, socializing. Here, I'm with you. Okay. And I do think most people view it that way. But what habits are you teaching your kids? So here's one I will tell you. And if you followed me for any amount of time, but something I talk about is I've done 75 hard every year it's came out. All right. My kids have watched me do that. Okay. What that means is when they were waking up, getting ready to go to school, they saw me coming in the house all sweaty or they see me finishing my workout. And then they want to see what dad's doing. Right. And this is just leading by example. And when they figured out what I was doing, I'm just getting a workout in. And then they see me every single night reading before bed. They ask questions. And then I explain why I do it. And then they actually came to me and said, hey, can we do this too? Of course you can. Here's how. And here's how you set it up. So right now, I have a 10-year-old and a 6-year-old that work out every single morning. Body weight stuff. Don't come at me. Or your kids are working out. Get it there, okay? It's all body gym, weight stuff. Get you, bro. You better stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause my kids, they're fine, right? We do a lot of off-ice training. We do a lot of plyometrics. We do some cool stuff. And by the way, they read their own stuff at night. Yeah. Uh, the six-year-old still needs a little bit of help, but that's normal. The 10-year-old is reading full-on novels and any book I put in front of him yeah. because he's been doing it so long. And he does it without – they do it without asking. But I'm going to tell you why. Because they saw me do it. They thought it was really cool, and they wanted to be like that. Okay? So they have these habits, and now they're going to grow up with those habits cemented. Yeah. Okay? Which gives them a massive advantage over the rest of the people out there. All right? And that's not an easy – that's not a hard thing to do. It's not a hard thing to put together. And it's also why whenever my kids see me doing something for work or myself or to get better and they ask, 
I tell them about it and right. I invite them to do it as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tell them, invite them and don't force them, especially early on. Right. Make it fun. If you That's why I work fun, out solo. I've invited everyone I know and nobody wants to show up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. So that that's a big one. All right. Because you want to focus on the habits that you're creating in your children. Yeah. What do you, what's one that you have that would help some of our listeners? Man, I just, I'm different uh, because I've got 14 and 12 year old females. They're a little yeah, older, different. So my oldest is just now getting into her competitive stage. My youngest is all about, she's just a homebody. She loves to relax. School's a lot for her. People are a lot for her. So her weekends and off time, she just, she's just leave me alone. <laughs> I don't want to do anything. Which is good and bad, right? Because you, you want to get your kids out and do stuff. But to your point, I'm also not going to force the card because I know what that will turn into later because of all the shit that my parents forced me to do. Yep. I encourage a massage, but when it gets to a point, I'm learning right now how to just stay away and stay out of the way. Yeah. Because my girls are at the age now where it's less dad, more mom, and then... If I'm too pushy, then it just blows the situation exactly. out. I think that to be a good leader also, like it's not always, doesn't always have to be a teaching moment yeah. as a parent. And so like, when you think about school and education and all these things tying together and how we teach our kids, there's some people out there who always want to teach and everything is a teaching moment and their kids resent them for it. And then what I'm learning right now, which I used to be that way, I used to try to, oh, that's great, but think of this and this and this and this, right? Yep. Now I'm just like, cool, awesome, how'd it go? And ask questions and don't dig and then leave so that I don't go to the old school, like try to help, right? Because at heart, it's just a, it's just the, the givers slash fixer mentality, mm -hmm. right? But the more that I hear, the more that I've been reading and seeing things, it's like, no, oh, bitch, you're just trying to control the situation by teaching. You're saying that you're teaching, but you're really being a fucking psychopath overarching on your kids so that's where i'm learning now is like all right cool is that how if that's how you want to go after it perfect i'm here to support you if it yep. doesn't work out and then throughout when we're not on the subject then i can go into my teaching so now i'm teaching this thing that we talked about two days ago in a different environment under a different umbrella of something that you don't even know that i'm correlating I like that. And that's yeah. starting to work a little better, but then it's like, all right, the ticker's got to remember that. Yeah. There's a lot of shit to keep up here in storage. I've just been playing with a couple of different things because school itself, like you can fight it or not fight it. That's they're either going to get the GED or not get the GED. Yeah. Right. Yeah. College. It's probably a whole nother conversation. Yeah. That's whole a whole other episode. Right. Yeah. That's another episode. Sure. Good but yeah, reality, dude. I told my kids, you, you want to go to school? Great. Go to school. You don't want to, you don't want to go to college. That's cool too. If you want to I'll take the money I was going to use for college and let you open a business. Yep. That's the truth. Oh yeah. That's the truth. Cause we'll sell these by then and we'll be bored anyway. So we'll want to start something new. Yeah. And I could tell you right now, my, my son, my oldest, the one with the 3d printing business, I promise you, I don't, I can't see him saying, dad, I want to go to college. It's going to be, all right, this is the business I want to start. And I'll tell you what, he'll send me a fucking itemized invoice saying, Hey, you would have spent this at college. I get, I bet you, I get an invoice for 200 grand the day that kid turns 18. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Cause he's going to be like, Oh, I would have gotten into this school with this. Uh, all right. Convincing argument, but I don't know if we're starting there, bud. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but he, I'm telling you. It's because of the habits. It's because of all these things that we do additional, why he does that and why he thinks that way, right? He thinks like an entrepreneur early. And I, and by the way, as I'm learning entrepreneurship lessons, I try to impart those on him when he, not just randomly, but when he asks, and I will say this, I've always tried to enhance what they do at school. So I don't necessarily want to fight it unless it's absolutely wrong. But we back it up. There's actually an, a free academy that's all world called the Khan Academy, K-H-A-N. And they go through preschool all the way up to master's and some graduate programs. And you can learn anything you want basically for free. And both my kids enjoyed that. And I had them doing the grade above 
in the summer. This way they can get ahead and get ready. Okay, why? Because it's competitive. And by the way, if you don't teach your kids how to be competitive, they, they'll never be competitive. Okay, yeah. so that's why sports is huge. Right. My kid asked me, hey, can you coach our hockey team? Absolutely. I got you. Did that. Why? Because I want to make sure they're learning the right things. And so now that's another thing to add. Right. How can we look at the well-being of our kids? How are we going to get them to be the end product? And every single one of us here, guys, as a parent, we all want the same thing. We want our kids to be better than we were. We want them to have more. We want them to be smarter. We want them to be able to build whatever they want to build. And so we are, it's our job to give these kids every tool we can, right? So yep. those free tools, te- and then also teach them the process of, all right? What do I mean by the process of? If we don't know how to do something, what do we do? We try to find a reputable video to watch on YouTube, okay? We do our due diligence. Why would you teach your kids that? Teach them how to teach themselves. If you teach your kids how to teach themselves and to learn new things, all right, there's no limit to what they're going to try, to what they're going to try to learn, and to what they are going to try to accomplish. And if you just give them a little bit of confidence, say, hey, I see you're doing it. You haven't done it yet, but I see you're putting in the work. Great job. That's all all the kids want, guys. That's it. And I think it's there's no more important job on this planet than being a parent and producing great children. Yeah, it ranks up there with the uh, don't be a dipshit. And if you have kids, you might as well strap in and do the right thing. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. There's something to that. But also, I don't I want to challenge people to think outside the normal concepts of what's been given to us for the past hundred years or whatever the fuck. Right. Yes. Because the reality is school has not changed and evolutionized much whatsoever. They're still teaching about the same stupid ass old shit, which again, I think depending on who you are and what you like serves, whether it's important or not, but how George Washington died and who was the first person to step on Plymouth Rock surely isn't teaching me how compound interest works. It isn't teaching me how to navigate complexities of interest rate environments or the Fed. Yeah. In which... Every single one of our decisions really stems from money, yeah. and governmental policy. So let's talk about why political bullshit is the way it is today, because yeah. we haven't really kept up with the times, nor have we held people fucking accountable to keeping up with times. Yep. We're based on the same four years. It's always the same. I yeah. want to make America greater than the last idiot who said they wanted to make America greater. Yep. Taxes. Why? Because these are the things that they have said, oh, the Americans clue in on those key words. Mm-hmm. Less taxes for the rich, more taxes for the rich, less for the poor, more for the yep. poor, less for the whatever. It's all agenda. Right. And so I think that at, at some form of education, it's all agenda driven. It's really financial. Right. Mm-hmm. Schools get grants from the government based upon certain facts and, and statuses of the kids at the school. This isn't, I want us to be the best school because we want these kids to be the fucking best. It is, this school gets more money than the next school because we say these things. Yep. Right. So, again, I think there's a lot of political bullshit, just like any other corporate world environment. Government says, send your kids there, go to jail. So, most people just comply. Yeah. And here's here's a a last thing I'm going to leave you with think about everything that you wish you learned in school make that list if you do nothing else make that list so they didn't teach you how to be a good citizen they didn't teach you how voting works they didn't teach you the political system they didn't how teach you how to balance a checkbook okay they didn't teach you how to start a business how to uh, incorporate an llc okay all the things that you can say school didn't teach me put in a list check that off Go down one by one with your children. What would that do for them? Could you imagine that? All right. Could you imagine if you did that with your kids, how meaningful that would be? Yeah. And someone get back to me and let me know how many times you put common core math and meaningful next to it. (laughs) What what is it? Pythagorean theorem? Yeah. How many times do you use that bitch? No, that's spell. Yeah. 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 I can't even spell it without spell checking. You kidding me? Yeah. Um, 
never solve for X either, especially with with Chat GPT on standby. And guys, I'm and and I want you guys all to understand it's deeply personal to me. Uh, it's something I'm trying to do right now, right? After losing both my parents, uh, my dad recently. Figure out something that you can leave them. Not money, not assets. And obviously, if you're listening to this, you're going to be leaving them some knowledge, but figure out some way to speak to them after it's over. Okay. I'm sure your kids would want that. Whether it's a video, it's a journal, it's a documentary, it's letters, right? Like I'll give you one that my wife does. She writes letters to them on their birthday. Uh, I, I do it too. I haven't been as consistent as she has been. And that's, mm -hmm. that'll be a game changer one day. The videos, right? Videos you could leave them with. Well, if you left them with a journal or letters, like, just things you think of daily that you write in a journal, turning that over to them. Impactful it'll, shit. Yeah, it, it'll be much more, it'll be better than any type of pictures or assets you leave them. All right. So. so I hope this helped you guys. Let's do this together as a group. Let's out-parent the school system and right because it's up to us. It's not on anybody else. It's on us. Mm -hmm. Let's do it together. Appreciate you guys for listening. Keith, thank you, big dog. Yeah, peace.